How's it going? This is SnapSap13 and welcome to my video tutorial. First I'd like to start off by saying that this video does not specifically show how to create signatures, but it entails all the qualities to a nice signature and will show examples of these qualities in action as well as show you how you can apply them to your own designs. In this tutorial, you will be learning more about creating flow, adding depth, using color to your advantage, adding a focal point, creating light sources, blending, and using the rule of thirds. If you'd like to skip to a certain section, I have placed time markers in the description with the divided sections. In addition, I'm going to be demonstrating these qualities using examples with some of my own works. This video was intended for educational use, so please do not copy or modify my work without my knowledge. Here we go. We're going to start off this tutorial with flow. What is it? Flow is the way your signature moves. Try looking at your render to determine the direction it is moving towards. In other words, look for longer lines in your render that stick out from others. In this signature, the solid lines give away the direction, and therefore, flow is from left to right. To make things easier, look for natural lines created by the subject. In this case, the flow was found using his arm as an aid. Also, wherever your subject is looking is a natural flow indicator. For instance, persons looking to the left will draw your eye to the left-hand side of the screen and vice versa. If your signature doesn't have a definite flow, you can create flow by using the liquify tool. However, this tool may not be hard to use, but is sometimes hard to apply to any given work. The liquify tool, if you choose to use it, is located in the top center toolbar under filter. Using the tool, you can essentially smudge your background or image to create your own flow. Likewise, you can use brushes to add to the flow. I used a bubble-like brush up the arm to accent the flow. Let's move on to depth. The purpose of depth is to create a 3D-like feel to the signature. You wouldn't want a person to look at your work and classify it as a flat image. Let's take a look to this sig. Depth was created by adding a background that showed movement towards the back. By making some stock photos bigger in the foreground and some smaller and further towards the back, you create the illusion of depth. Depth can be created by using a variety of techniques. For example, you can use colors, sharpen your render, or blur the background. If you're not familiar with these tools, they are located in the middle left toolbar just below the paint bucket. The first icon will be the blur tool, but if you hold down your click, you can sharpen or smudge. Also, by placing effects such as splatter brush layers in front and behind your image, you create layer depth by incorporating outside elements. Next, we'll talk about using colors to your advantage. It would be helpful to look at the color wheel and determine which colors you want to use, then relate to your render and theme. Color is important because it gives pleasing visual effects. There are five different color harmonies that I suggest researching. They are monochromatic, the use of one color in different shades, complementary, colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, analogous, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, triadic, colors that are equally spaced around the wheel, forming a triangle, and square, the use of four colors evenly spaced on the color wheel that form a square. The main colors used in this signature are variants of blue and purple. Gray, white, and black are all dead colors, so they can be used interchangeably in any signature. Sometimes you may see other artists changing their completed works to black and white or desaturated images. Now let's move on to focal points. A focal point is the place or places where you want the, your viewer to pay attention to first. This goes along with creating a light source, which will be described next. In this signature, the ball is intended to be the focal point. Light textures and extra lighting have been placed around the ball area to draw your eye. Notice that more than one focal point may be used, as long as it's relevant to the signature. Near the bottom, there's a focal point in which draws the eyes to the text. This is especially important if your client wants people to notice the text. A good signature will have a focal point, because if it didn't, the viewer would not know what to look at or what they are currently looking at. Along with focal points, lighting is equally important. You'll notice that on any stock picture, there is some sort of lighting on the face and or object you are trying to use. Take note on which direction the light is coming from in order to recreate the lighting in Photoshop. In this signature, the stock photo used had the light source located above the subject, therefore exposing the face a bit more. In addition, light sources were added to this signature behind the subject, which can be considered the most common. Using techniques like this is also part of establishing good blending. The majority of the time, a graphic artist will use more than one image to create an entire piece of work. This means that all of the images have to blend together to create one false picture. In order to do this, layer properties and other effects will be used. When you import a picture, the layer property will be set to normal by default. 
To change this, go to your layers on the lower right hand side of the screen and directly under the layers tab is a drop down list. Experiment with these different types of layer settings as well as the opacity of these layers. If you don't like a part of the effect the new layer property is giving, erase some of the picture or create a layer mask to get rid of it. Last but not least, this video tutorial will be covering using the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is defined as a compositional rule of thumb used in visual arts. The rule states that an image should be divided into nine equal parts by two equally spaced horizontal lines and two equally spaced vertical lines, and that important compositional elements should be placed along these lines or their intersections. This technique is attributed to created tension, energy, and interest in the composition than simply centering the subject would. Take a look at this signature. The subject is placed on the right hand third with the face and chest placed on an intersecting thirds. Additionally, the text in the signature was placed directly below the lower left hand third. Equally important, the right hand side of any piece of art is considered heavier than the left. That is to say, a person's natural tendency is to look to the right, so by putting the subject on the right, you are fulfilling their desire to look there. You can add your own guides by estimating using the ruler tool. Its hotkey is Ctrl plus R, and by dragging the guides down from the ruler, or by going to View, New Guide, and then entering the values based on your canvas size. I would suggest locking your guides until you are done using them, and you can clear them in the same manner as you did to create them. Go to View, Lock Guides, or View, Clear Guides. That pretty much wraps up this video tutorial. Hopefully you learned something, but if you're still confused or have any questions, don't hesitate to message me or leave a comment on here, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Be sure to check out my other video tutorials and stay tuned for future videos. Thanks.